How long does it take to save money with solar panels? Well, unfortunately, this is a really tricky question because this video and my channel are for everyone around the world. And there's lots of different people in different countries that watch it. And this answer is different depending on which country you live in, depending on what kind of EV you have. Do you have a Ford F-150 Lightning? Do you have bi-directional charging? Do you have battery storage already? Will you get battery storage? Yeah, tricky question. I'll do my best to give you a simplified answer. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, the simplified answer is yes, you will save money getting solar panels. Absolutely no question about it. In fact, in Australia, where solar panels are much cheaper than the US, these equations will be different. But this methodology here I've used is more for a US market, but it gives you a general idea on other areas as well. Solar panels are expensive in the US. Even though prices continue to come down, they're still relatively pricey for you guys. You pay about double what we do in Australia. But here's how to figure out how long it will take your energy savings for your energy savings to make solar panels worthwhile. Are they worthwhile? Absolutely. Would you say the same thing, say, 10 years ago? Possibly not. It depends where you live. I mean, if you live in the UK, if you live somewhere where it's cloudy all the time in the past, not so good. However, solar panels do now work pretty well, even when it's cloudy. Efficiency has improved, right? Whilst efficiency has improved pretty drastically, the prices have come down. So now it's a no-brainer, and basically it's a no-brainer anywhere in the world now. Works much better if you live in a sunny area, but still will work even in cloudy areas. There's many different reasons to consider solar panels. You might wanna help the environment while simultaneously saving money by giving your home an alternative source of power. Or you might just wanna save money on your power bill. Solar is what's coming in terms of how we start powering our homes. And I mean, in Australia, more people have installed solar panels on their roofs than any other country on, in the world. One of the key reasons for that is it's very sunny in Australia, but it's also because people have realized how much they can save. That said, initially the installation may appear expensive. So before you invite a crew of solar installers onto your roof, you might wanna understand when or if the panels will start to pay for themselves. So what is a solar panel payback period? A solar payback period is a fancy way of talking about how long it takes for the money you've spent to be outweighed by the money you've saved on your electricity bill. If you've got an EV, it's a no-brainer because you use more electricity than someone else. And these equations will be a bit different for you. It's not even actually worth even looking into this. It's better just to go out and get solar panels if you've got an electric car, plus a battery pack if you can do that. By the way, Tesla Powerwall prices have come down recently. So definitely worth looking at the moment into getting a power wall if you've got solar panels. Now it usually takes a few years to pay off the initial cost of your solar panels. It used to take longer, but now panels are cheaper. Solar bay payback periods though can vary widely and it depend on how you pay for the system in the first place. There's a lot of factors that play into that for any given home or household, says the US Department of Solar Energy Technology Office. Now, ADT Solar say an average payback period in the US is between 6 to 12 years, with most households leaning closer to the 6-year period. Now, obviously, the further south you are, the closer to the 6-year period you, you'll be. In fact, you might even be less than 6 years. Now, it's hard to say what the exact period will be because the energy market prices are constantly changing. But here are some factors that will influence your solar payback period. No two solar systems for starters are the same. That means no two solar payback periods are the same either, unfortunately. So it might seem like an easy answer, but it's actually complicated. And one of the things that affects it is, well, what way is your roof even facing? Is it facing towards the sun? That could drastically change your payback period. Calculating your potential payback period will depend on lots of variables. Total solar system cost is one of them. The more you pay for your system, the longer it's going to take to recoup your costs. Solar systems can range in price from a few thousand dollars to tens of thousands, depending on where you live, how big your system is, what your needs are, what type of system you choose to install. Are you gonna get Tesla batteries or some other company's batteries to go with your system? A solar battery could easily increase the cost of your system by $10,000 or more, of course. But if you do install batteries, 
then you'll save even more. So even though the initial upfront cost is higher, your savings would of course be greater. Incentives and tax credits do apply. Once you know the total cost of your solar system, you have to factor in any state or federal incentives you might qualify for. You might qualify for. The Federal Residential Clean Energy Credit, for example, gives you 30% back on the initial price paid. So your state may have additional incentives on top of that, and you need to check if it does. You don't want to miss out on those incentives. Those credits can mean that a massive percentage of the initial cost actually isn't paid by you, making your payback period a bit shorter. Now, one thing that affects your payback is also how much energy you use. Sometimes rooftop solar can completely cover your electricity needs, reducing your energy bill to zero. For example, my parents pay zero dollars on their energy needs, but there's only two of them living in the house and they don't blow, they don't put on all their devices all the time. They, they're fairly good when it comes to energy usage. If you consume a lot of, elect a lot of electricity, solar might only translate to a you know, 50% reduction, for example, to your costs. Now, another thing to consider is what is the electricity production of your solar system? Like I mentioned before, the direction of your roof, how many panels you have, what type of panels they are, they could influence your payback. You probably never thought about much about your roof, but it makes a big difference in how your solar investment will play out. If your roof has room for lots of panels that soak up the sun all day, if you live in a sunny area, for example, then you'll produce a lot of electricity and see a much quicker payback. But if you live on a shady lot and your panel's production is more intermittent, you won't see a payback quite as quickly. If you've got branches covering your roof, cut those branches down. If you want to, you can plant more trees elsewhere. You can, there's lots of different ways you can contribute to the global number of trees on the planet. Better thing to do though is move any branches away from the roof of your house to make sure you get sun on the house, on the roof as often as possible. So the cost of electricity and the rate of increase is a factor. This is a huge but sometimes overlooked factor in this solar payback period. Basically, the higher the electricity rates where you live, the more lucrative solar can be for you. That's because as utility rates increase, you save more money by relying on your solar panels instead of drawing power from the grid. Now, there's some places in the world where electricity is insanely cheap. A lot of those places, by the way, have renewable energy sources. For example, in Australia, the cheapest place to get power is the place where they use 100% renewable energy or the city where it runs 100% on renewable energy. So how do you calculate your solar payback period? If you want to get a rough idea of your potential solar payback period, here's how you can do it. Keep in mind you want to consult experts, meaning the people who are actually installing the particular system that you're buying, to make sure your numbers are accurate. But this can give you an idea. Number one, start with the total cost to install solar on your home. Be sure to consider interest and fees if you're taking out a loan. But remember, you've got to subtract any rebates, incentives or tax credits after you've done that. Now, you should have the net cost of your solar system after discounts. You can estimate your annual electricity bill savings with solar panels. Again, your solar installer or utility provider should be able to help you by giving you an estimate, an estimate on how much electricity you'll get from your system based on what angle it's pointed at, what angle is your roof facing, how many panels you're installing. So you've got to ask the installer, how much power will this system give me on average? And you, if you get, say, three different quotes from three different companies, ask every single one of them, how much power will this system generate? And if one of them just gives you a ridiculous number and the other two give you a, a pretty close number, well, obviously you're going to pick the ones that are two that are close to each other because they're going to give you a realistic idea. The other thing you might want to say is, hey, have you installed any other systems on similar roofs in this area or in this state, for, for example? Then you're getting an idea of how much electricity that system can provide you with. You can then divide the net cost of the system by the annual bill savings. Finally, the number you end up with is the number of years it will take for the panels to pay for themselves. Here's a look at the formula. Total solar system costs minus rebates divided by electricity bill savings per year equals payback period in years. In practice, here's what that could look like. Let's say the total system cost for your home is $25,000, which is a lot. That's probably more than most people would pay. 
where you can get a pretty good system for 10,000. But anyway, let's just give you an idea on 25,000. You qualify for $10,000 in incentives. You've worked that out, right? So the net cost is now $15,000. You know, the panels will help you save $1,500 per year on electricity bills. Divided by $1,500 is 10 years. That means it takes you 10 years to pay back the price of the panels. Keep in mind though, when you sell your house, it's often a big selling feature to have solar panels. People, particularly in Australia, will pay more for a property with solar panels on that property. So why is it important to actually know your payback period? Well, now that you know the period and how long it's gonna take you to pay it back, now you can have an idea of whether or not you should make this decision. If you live in a sunny area, it's an absolute no-brainer to get solar panels. Now, if you're renting, could be trickier. This changes, of course, if you're renting. However, if finances matter to you, if day-to-day -day finances matter to you more than long-term, or if you're gonna sell the house very shortly, then of course, you really need to consider the factors going on here. So what is an average payback? Well, an average payback period of time in the US is around about 10 years. That's the approximate time. In Australia, it's closer to five to six years, but it depends on the state that you're living in. Now, experts in most countries, including Europe, America, and Australia, have confirmed from all the sources that I've looked at that it does add value to your home. The average price people pay for a house does increase if it has solar panels. Now, there are a couple of instances where getting solar panels wouldn't make sense. Here's one of them. If you know you're gonna to need to replace your roof soon, you don't wanna do it. You wanna replace the roof first, then get the panels installed. Now, if you have a lot of shade on your roof, let's say it's shady 90% of the day, probably isn't gonna make sense if you can't change that factor. Now, keep in mind, the cost of solar panels has come down enormously. In fact, it's come down by 89% over the past 30 years. Whilst the price has come down, the efficiency of panels has gone up significantly. Panel efficiency now is around about 22 to 23% which is about double what it was at 15 years ago. So generally, solar panels are a brilliant idea. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.